Hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you for joining us for our August Climate Watch update brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and our official business partnership at IBM. Well, the very latest from the Bureau of Meteorology is that El Nino is still on the way and is likely to be announced in the coming weeks, which is pretty much in line with what we've been saying for much of this year, that it would be sometime around the end of winter and the start of spring. It's already been announced in America, but that's because the atmosphere is already caught up with what is going on at sea. So let me explain this because uh, this is a little bit of a disconnect that's going on at the moment in our part of the world. For our Nino to be announced, you have the sea surface conditions around the equator being warmer than average out over towards the Americas. And then on our side of the world, uh, the sea surface temperatures should start to cool down and we should start to see more in the way of high pressure. But so far, the atmosphere hasn't yet really done that, although this map right here for the start of August is what El Nino looks like in our part of the world. More high pressure over Australia, keeping it dry for the east. And for New Zealand, it should be stretching out, giving us the westerly winds, which we've been getting. So we're sort of there, but we're also seeing a lot more low pressure in the New Zealand area. And Australia is still seeing plenty of easterlies and some low pressure to the north. And that's normally not quite the case with El Nino. So it's a little bit complicated, but like I say, two ways to measure it, one at the sea, at the equator and the other is in the atmosphere. So our atmosphere is yet to catch up, but the sea surface temperatures, look at this, they are rocketing up above normal. And over the coming months, it's going to be well up above normal, uh, getting up to two and a half degrees, uh, if not more, above what is usually recorded there. So that is a classic strong El Nino. But the downside is that over in our part of the world, sea temperatures are still well above normal, especially around New Zealand, where we've got this marine heat wave, which we've had pretty much all year. So we're in a neutral, chaotic weather pattern at the moment. It's not being driven by El Nino yet, even though you can see it showing up there on those maps. But uh, the, the marine heat wave in the New Zealand area and to the north is making it a little bit more complicated. Are seeing some parts of the Tasman Sea getting back to normal, even a little bit cooler than usual? That's what we would expect during El Nino, but at the moment, uh, the sea surface conditions, especially around New Zealand, are above average. And the Moana project certainly highlighting that at the moment. Look at this. In the uh, moderate, strong, severe areas, yellow, orange, and red, you're seeing that all around the North Island and around the bottom of the South Island. So that's quite significant, and it means that for slow-moving rain events, that rain can be enhanced. Same if there's low pressure parks nearby. And if you live in coastal areas and you normally get a frost in winter, probably noticed you haven't had many frosts this year. So the extra couple of degrees at sea is being noticed, being felt. So let's take a look at the model of all models, taking a look at uh, what the different governments around the world, excluding New Zealand, because we don't have uh, open data in New Zealand, but this is the main players around the world and what they're showing is the gray lines leaning in towards El Nino. This is for August. As we go through the months ahead, September, October, it's all growing further and further into that El Nino area. And it continues to do that right through to the end of the year. These lines getting bigger as the sea surface temperatures up at the equator over towards the Americas continues to get warmer and warmer. Uh, one thing to note though, NOAA, that's the American one, starts to drop a little bit here in December versus November. That's the only one that does that. So they're suggesting maybe it peaks in November, other, other nations are saying it will peak at the end of the year going into our summer down here in the Southern Hemisphere. So let's take a look at August and how it is shaping up. So with El Nino, we're going to be seeing more high pressure zones like this one uh, coming in. But obviously we still get these storms like we've got kicking off this month, but they're short lived. Any snowy blast we've been getting in New Zealand for the last few weeks or last couple of months, short lived. They last a day or two and then it's gone, knocked away by the windy westerlies. So as we go through this month, you do see more high pressure still dominating parts of Australia and maybe dropping down to the southern areas. But this area here, where it looks like a bit of a, a puncture in the uh, high pressure zone, it's a sign of lower pressure and that's not normally the case with El Nino in that part of the world. So this is why it's still a little bit messy and we're still seeing showers coming into the northern part of Queensland, especially around Cairns. So normally with El Nino, you see rainfall dropping along the eastern side of both countries. Now here, going into week two, westerly winds are still blowing around New Zealand. But as we go through to week three, the middle part of the month towards the end of the month, 
getting a gap in between the highs where a low could come through. Now, this is a long way out, it's not 100% locked in, but that placement with the high out here could drive down subtropical rain. It's possible, it's showing up in fact in some of the long range data. And you're still seeing the windy westerlies south of those highs. So depending on where the highs are, the windy westerlies will be nearby. So soil moisture wise, well, the westerly change that we've seen over the last few weeks has started to show up, the, the more sort of lime green, getting it to around normal for this time of the year. Still wetter than average though for this eastern side of the North Island in particular, and certainly the eastern side of the South Island with the recent rain that fell in July. And there could still be some more with these southerlies coming through uh, that could produce a little bit more wet weather for these eastern areas. But let's take a look at this rainfall. So that low I talked about in the middle of the month, that potential low, that is it here. So it's not locked in, but there's a chance it could tap into a bit of subtropical rain. If that doesn't happen, and that stays to the north of New Zealand, most of our wet weather is coming from the western side, from our friends over here in Hobart and Melbourne, sending over these westerlies. And that's why you're seeing rain building up on the western side of Tasmania and of New Zealand. Dry through this big section here, a lot of high pressure. There's a reason why there are deserts in Australia. Closer up version of that map, there is that potential rain in the middle of the month. Like I say, it's borderline, so don't, don't totally lock it in. Uh, the rain that's most likely to be locked in is this western rain where you're getting up to 100 to 150 millimetres over the next two weeks. That's about normal. And on the eastern side, much drier. In fact, that blue dot there, five millimetres over 15 days. So that is not a lot of rain. So let's stretch this out more from IBM, the departure from normal. And this shows you over the next four weeks, based on the IBM Watson supercomputer, crunches all of the models around the world and it works out where that rain is going to fall and whether or not that is more or less than what we would normally have in the month of August. Now the shading you're seeing here for much of the country is pretty much in the middle, leaning just a little bit drier, sort of more on that 12 millimetres. That's not a lot, that's still really close to normal. And we just saw uh, this basically set up across parts of Waikato and Bay of Plenty and Northland over the last month. Some of those areas still wet, but not as wet as they could be. So the lower part of New Zealand still getting the rain, Southland, Otago, some parts of Canterbury from the uh, busy Southern Ocean weather that we're still seeing. Stretch that out, going into spring, no real change. And this is what we've been seeing all year from IBM. They've been saying El Nino is most likely to form at the end of winter, the start of spring. So that's around August, September, maybe October at the very latest. I'd be surprised though, if it was that late. So we're seeing a similar pattern, not in the middle, leaning a little bit drier than average, but not extreme, not going off into that red zone, not yet anyway. And taking a look at temperatures, again, no real change from what we've seen all this year, leaning just a little bit warmer than average, around sort of half a degree to one degree above normal. Now that doesn't mean it feels warm. We get quite a few complaints from people saying, we've had frost that's been cold. It can be minus 500 degrees and still be warmer than average, if it's normally minus 600 degrees. I'd be talking about other planets, obviously not ours. But the idea there is that warmer than average is just meaning that compared to usual, it's a little bit warmer than it should be. And that's what we're seeing right here. Now, one more map to show you. This is from Niwa, uh, quite an interesting map. Explains what happens in spring with a typical El Nino. Now, we still don't quite have it yet locked in, but what you see here in the orange and red purple shading, those areas are drier than average. If you're colorblind, that's the top of the South Island, big chunk of the North Island, and the Eastern areas. Those areas usually are drier and hotter, but the areas with the blue and the green shading down here in the South and the Southwest, and also a little bit up here around Auckland and Northland, can actually be a little bit wetter than average because of the westerly winds and all the showers that you get from that. So I just thought that was an interesting map to share from you. We're going to share more stuff from Niwa in the coming year. It's really good to see that the New Zealand government has announced a review into what is going on uh, with Niwa and Met Service, the double up we've got here in New Zealand. And we wanna to get to a point where we can just start using tax funded weather maps like those ones that we just showed you there. So we look forward to showing you more of the New Zealand content, but we're still very much uh, lock sync with what is happening in Australia with the Bureau of Meteorology, who are the experts really for our part of the world. That's all from me. We'll be back again in a month's time as we continue to track El Nino, but if it is announced 
anytime between now and September, we will do a special quick update for you on that. So please do keep an eye uh, out for that video. But that's all from me for today. Enjoy the month of August, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.